Okay, we're going to take on the muscles of the legs, really from the pelvis on down, uh, where we left off. Before was right at, right at the waist level with the ilium. We had the, the erectus abdominis coming up from this front pelvic triangle, and along the ilium here, we had the external obliques. Um, and there is this kind of nice divide here. Uh, there's this band of connective tissue that runs from that front pelvic point down to the tubercles of the uh, of the pubis here, and uh, so that would be over here, like this, and it's shorter. So from the front pelvic point to that tubercle of the pubic bone there, uh, and it's called the inguinal ligament. And that what that does is it uh, pulls on your pelvis, pulls it forward, and it's uh, it's shorter in women than in men, so you tend to get even more of a thrust forward with the pelvis. And again, it's countered, it's countered with the with the rib cage coming forward and the pelvis coming back. Okay, it's also uh, a nice, uh, well, it's the connective tissue for the, the external obliques as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on some muscles of the legs here, uh, and then we'll come back up and take on some of the muscles in the hip, but we're gonna be covering some of that up. So um, one of the nice things about the legs is we can think about the, um, we can think about the functions of the muscles. And if they're all doing the same thing, then uh, we can sort of consider them together, at least for surface anatomy. And there's a whole group of muscles that runs along the, uh, this ischium here, the tuberosity of the ischium. And it comes down, and there's five of these muscles. They start right out here, and they start running their way down and the longest one is called a gracilis, and it's going to come all the way down and come in and hook right in here. It goes behind the, uh, the condyle of the femur there. So uh, this, this is, of course, a, a muscle, a group of muscles, though the adductor group, that we would see, uh, again, coming down, and across here, we would see that this influence on the inside of the leg, both front, front and back. And again, with the gracilis coming down. And so all, all, all in here is the adductor. Like this. The adductors. So the same thing here. And that's hooking all along the bottom here, coming over to your leg. And the adductors. And again, that influence will be right, right along through here, but we won't really see the adductors from the inside. So, I mean, we could attach them to the inside of the leg, but from, the, from this view from the outside of the leg, that's really not going to, to be what shows up here. Okay, so then on the, with the adductors, and again, they're responsible for this kind of movement. Then the next step on the leg would be 
the movement forward and back, the extension and, and flexing of the leg. What we want to go after uh, on the back of the leg here are the hamstring group. It's a group of three muscles. And on the, uh, one of them has two heads to it. So it's, it's, a, it's a bicep. It's a bicep femur. It's the bicep of the femur. And the first, the first head is going to uh, attach along The muscles on the front of the legs are known as the quadricep group. They're, they are a set of extensors. They extend your leg. And the way they do that is they'll tie into different areas along the leg uh, and actually in the pelvis as well. And they'll share a common tendon down here, the quadricep tendon, that will attach to the patella. And then the patella, in turn, has a ligament that comes down and attaches into the tibia, called the patellar ligament. And that's the tendon, the quadricep tendon. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're quad, right, four, so we're gonna put four different muscles on here. The one that will cover up right away is the intermedius, the vastus intermedius. Um, it's going to run down the leg, kind of like this. So it's the deepest of the quadricep muscles. And it attaches along the leg, and then it goes into that common uh, tendon. And then, uh, so we'll just cover that up in a second. Uh, we have three vastus muscles, the vastus medi medialis in the middle, the vastus lateralis on the side, and then the vastus intermedius, which will again cover up. So the vastus, um, let's go after the vastus lateralis. It's gonna sit on uh, the outside of the uh, trochanter here, just below the head it's going to attach. And it's going to come down, and it's going to come down, and uh, it's going to be kind of narrow and long, and then it's going to come into that common tendon there. So if I were to color that in so you can see that a little better. We'll start up here, and this muscle is going to come in. Kind of like that, the fast, this. The vastus lateralis. can do that over here too. So again, coming up down from the, just on the bottom of the trochanter here, along the outside edge, and then tying into that tendon of the quadriceps. So it has a fairly thin profile from the front. Where the vast, vastus lateralis gets quite large is looking at it from the side view. So again, just below the head of the trochanter where we're gonna tie in there. Then we're gonna come in, we know we wanna share that common tendon here, the quadriceps tendon. But this muscle is gonna be quite, quite robust, quite large. From the side view. So it'll go back beyond the femur there. vastus lateralis. When we get done over here and we do the legs on the, the muscles on the back of the legs, we'll come back and we'll draw this in. We'll see some of this. The, the quadriceps are wider than the hamstrings are on the, on the back. 
On the inside of the legs here, we'll have, of the quadriceps, we'll have the vastus medialis. It's going to hook on up here uh, on the femur where if we wanted to, we could have put in, I guess, a little detail here, a little, a little bump. Okay. So we have the, the greater trochanter out here. This is known as the lesser trochanter, that little bump. And we're gonna start there with this vastus muscle. It's going to come down, and then it's going to very much, uh, I feel like it has a very heavy belly just above the condyle of the femurs here. So just, just above that, we're gonna have a big belly coming up to that lesser trochanter there. So if I sort of clean that, all that green up there of the adductors. So that's kind of the, the feeling of it. It's going to come down and really have a belly towards the inside. So I sort of feel like the vastus medialis is a bit lower in weight to the vastus lateralis, which seems to have its more its contour a bit higher up. Okay. So if we just uh, okay, that's attaching to the that lesser tubercle, or the tr lesser trochanter. All right, so we'll come down and draw the other vastus medialis, medialis, we have a big belly here, and coming up, you're going to erase maybe a little bit in there. Just fill that in now. So coming down, vastus medialis. And then it goes into that, that common tendon. Okay. So on the inside here, That way, huh? Vastus medialis. All right, so that quadricep tendon, just to define it a little bit there, is what's going to hook these. the vastus muscles into the patella. Quadricep tendon. And this little guy is the patellar ligament. So it gives you double strength action because you're hooking once and hooking in. So it's the strength to make that, that extension, that movement. Now for the uh, quadricep, the last of the four quadricep muscles, the rectus femoris. And the rectus femoris is actually, it's the only muscle of the four that goes over two joints. So it's actually gonna start up here on that anterior inferior point of the pelvis. So it's going to attach here and it's going to come down. So it has this tendon coming down. And then it, it, it will also share in that common tendon of the quadricep, but 
it, it can get pretty narrow down here. So it sits much more like that, if you will. Let's do the other side too. Sometimes it feels like it kind of almost splits the uh, vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis uh, when you're looking at it on the surface. So again, we have the anterior inferior point of the iliac sp spine where this attaches and a nice big belly of Rectus femoris. So uh, the rectus femoris, where it's going to be attaching, is right here on that inferior bump of the pelvis, right beneath that major bump. So this is where it's going to attach. And it's going to come down. And again, it, it's gonna, the belly is going to be higher than the vastus lateralis. And of course, it's coming into the middle of the quadricep here. So belly and out. Okay, having a look at the quadriceps, the muscles on the front of the legs here, we have the uh, rectus femoris on top here, coming down in the middle. Behind it would be the vastus intermedius. This is the vastus medialis coming down here, kind of droopy on the inside, right? Real belly down here. On the outside, vastus lateralis, kind of, kind of more elongated, a very wide muscle here. And that's the quadriceps. All right, we're gonna take on the muscles of the back of the upper legs here. It's the muscle group known as the hamstrings. They are also the, the flexor muscles. We are going to draw, there's three that we're gonna draw the two inside muscles, and then we'll draw the outside uh, muscle. The two on the inside are the semimembranosus and the semitendinosus. The semimembranosus we'll draw first because it's attached to a point on the ischium here, and the tuberosity is further to the front, okay? So what we want to do is kind of hook right in here, okay? and then this is sort of the inside half of the hamstring, so we're gonna, we can almost draw, I mean, you want to have a little bit of a kind of a feel of the belly to this, but you can almost draw a line down to divide the inside from the outside of the hamstring. So that strap's gonna come down, 
and this semi uh, membranosus is going to be a little wider, a little wider than the tendinosus. And it's going to come down, and what it's going to do is going to, it's going to wrap kind of over the spool here, the condyle of the uh, femur. And then it's going to come down and it's going to attach on the back of the tibia here. So let me uh, grab the eraser. So what that kind of looks like then is from that tuberosity of the ischium coming down here. All right. You see it? And then color it in. All right, we can do the same on the uh, other side here. So coming off the uh, tuberosity again, we're going to come down. Again, maybe it's just easiest to think about taking that middle line coming down and then just building a belly off of that a little bit. And then the strap coming down over condyle, looking on the back there of the tibia. So let's get that. So you still have the, uh, the adductors taking over the contour of the leg. One, two. This is the semimembranosus. Semimembranosus. Above that, is the semi-tendinosis. And it's going to hook on, uh, just coming forward here, still on that ischial tuberosity. And it's going to come down, and it has kind of a more of a narrowness to it, if you will. So it's going to have more of a strap up here. And then what, where it ends up down here is it wraps around, and it actually hooks uh, it actually hooks on the front of uh, the tibia here. So it comes around and hooks right in there. So that strap's going to come around and it's going to come up and it has, again, it has a bit more of a, a thinness to it, if you will. So it's, it's, it's a strap that covers, not entirely, but it goes over semimembranosus. And coming around. To the front of the tibia here. Semi-tendinosis. Okay, let's go for the outside of the hamstring here. So this is a single muscle. Here we have two on the inside, semi-membranosis, semi-tendinosis. On the outside, it's called the bicep femurs. And so the first head 
is going to sort of run, run along the middle of the leg here. Uh, it's, it's a uh, muscle that goes over one joint, and where it's going to come down is it's going to spool onto the back here of the outside of the tibia. Now we're going to cover this up in just a second here. So it's going to spool out and create the outer hamstring here. And where it's going to end up is on the head of the fibula. Now the, that's, that's the short head. The longer head of the bicep femoris is going to hook on up here alongside semimembranosus, semitendinosus. And uh, it's going to also land on the outside of the head of the fibula here. So again, we can kind of come down with that strap. And this will overtake the medial head or the uh, shorter head there. Coming down from that tuberosity of the ischium there onto the head of the fibula. Bicep femur. So to draw that on the other side. And coming down. They want to end up here and open up on a strap. The tendinous band into more of the belly of the muscle. Uh, back view here, or let's go to side view and we'll come back again. From the side view here, yeah, along this, this ischium, the, the tuberosity of the ischium here will have the semimembranosa, semitendinosus, and bicep femoris. So all, they'll all hook in here. And where we're going to end up with the bicep femoris is down here on the head of the fibula. So that's going to be that strap that comes down. Bicep femurs. Let's go on uh, to the gluteal group, a set of four muscles that I, I say because uh, we wouldn't see all these attachment points in the back of the legs with the hamstrings if we had done those first. Um, the gluteus medius, the middle one, Thick, wide muscle. It's going to run along the ilium here. That whole crest of the ilium. It's running from front to back, more or less. Not all the way back, not, but almost, uh, not quite to the front pelvic bump, but basically most of it here. It's going to insert into the head of the trochanter, the greater trochanter. And so its shape 
will be something like this. With the muscle fibers coming down. Okay. All right, so let me draw that in. Luteus medius. All right, will we see that from the front? Yeah, we'll see it from the front too. So coming along this edge of the ilium to the head of the trochanter. Right in there. And of course, going on around But that'll be a, a bit of a contour on the outside of the hip. Okay. Same thing here, head of the greater trochanter along the ilium, coming around to the front, going towards the back. from the back too? Yeah. Because it's coming around on that ilium. We'll have it go partly along the back too. And the head of the trochanter. Muscle fibers running down like this, right? Same thing over here on the other hip, crest of ilium, head of trochanter. So that will be gluteus medius. All right, now the gluteus maximus. That's going to continue along this uh, iliac crest, coming back to the posterior bumps here. All along here is where the gluteus maximus is going to hook. And then what it's going to do is it's going to insert itself kind of right, right, in, right in here, right below the lesser trochanter. So it's going to come down across here. It's going to insert itself. Right like that. Into the side of the trochanter. Look at my eraser. Kind of has this shape to it. All right, so it will come along and right into the side of the trochanter there. So gluteus medius to the maximus.
So from the side view here, yeah, coming right into the femur, and basically, if you look at, I mean, there's a tendinous mass here we need to talk about, but you could say maybe between the hamstrings and the quads in that divide, here is where you could insert the uh, gluteus muscles. And all along the sacrum, cossacks. Let's work on uh, stabilizing the legs here. Uh, we have a couple of straps that come down the inside and outside of our legs. Um, and they're tied into a, uh, there's a, a muscle right here too. That, uh, in fact, maybe it's easier to start over here. It's called, uh, it hooks right here on the front of the ilium and it's gonna come down in kind of a, a big teardrop shape. from that front pelvic point. This is that main point of the front triangle. Okay. And that, that is the uh, tensor muscle. The tensor of the fascia latte. And so what that means is actually that tensor muscle is tying into um, a, whole, a whole band of muscle here. Because what, what's gonna happen here is that band is gonna have, this will attach to that and have a common, common tendon that will go right down to the, to the tibia like that. And that's called the iliotibia tract or iliotibia band. And then what it does here is it flares out into a much bigger aponeurosis that the, that the gluteal muscles are coming into as well. So they all form a part of the sheath here. And it's sort of indistinguishable. Like the white and the green there. Okay. Iliotibia band. So where that, that comes down here is from the front pelvic point, we're gonna sort of teardrop like this. So this is on top. And our rec the, uh, the whole rectus femoris and all of the quads were hooking below of that. But this is right on that front pelvic point. Tensor muscle. All right, so I'm going right over here. Front pelvic point coming down this way. I guess I, I use this green over there. I'll 
show it better. And then it's going to tie itself into that iliotibia band coming down the side here and hooking on to the side of the tibia there. Well, this will be the widest point on a, on a male, typically. On a female, just a little bit below, right in there. Helio tibia tract. OK, so that's, that does a lot to stabilize the leg, the knee. Uh, has something to do with rotation, too. But it's, it's sort of paired with the muscle that comes off that same front pelvic point that goes to the inside of the leg and forms a strap to the inside of the knee. And uh, that's, that's called the sartorius muscle. And it's really a wonderful muscle in that it, it makes this long journey. It's going to come. It's a little hard to get it all on, on like a, almost even more like a three quarter view, but it's going to come down to the inside here. So the tensor to the outside, sartorius to the inside, and it's going to follow this, more or less this division of the muscles between the adductors and the quads. And then it's going to go on behind, it's going to take that vastus uh, medialis line and go back towards the very back of the leg. And then it's going to come back around behind here and hook on to the inside of the uh, tibia there, the cap of the tibia. So it's a very thin muscle, just like the strap of the iliotibia band. So again, the sartorius coming down this way, going towards the back of the leg now behind here and then coming back around again. Uh, it's known as the Taylor's muscle. So if you can imagine, like, I don't know if you see this, but bringing your leg up to uh, do your tailoring, uh, that's what that muscle's involved in as well. All right, so. Let's, let's, in fact, as we're talking about fascia here, one of the adductors, the pectineus, would, would come around on the front of the pelvis here and would be going inside here. Well, we wouldn't see so much of a pelvis like that. Or there's five of these guys. And then we have, just like the aponeurosis, we have it that goes into the iliotibia band. We have an aponeurosis that we talked about a little bit that's between the abdominals as they come down here, maybe a little wider. But we'll have that aponeurosis all through here. wider down here. And then we have, again, that aponeurosis just sort of ties itself in with our uh, external obliques there. That really completes that figure a little more. OK, to tidy up a couple more things, on the back here, we would, uh, the back view, we would have the vastus lateralis. That would be definitely showing up here. So we would have the femur coming up, and we have the, remember the, the head of the femur, the great trochanter here? Oops, a little too high.
Okay, so for the back here, we've got the trochanter coming up. The head of the great trochanter. And then uh, attaching just below that head would be vastus lateralis. Remember, it's coming down, tying into the front of the common tendon of the patella there with the uh, quadriceps tendon. So it's going to come up here, but it's going to be wider than the hamstrings we've been doing, wider than the bicep femoris. So it's going to do something like that. And the same thing over here. Now again with the gluteal muscles, there's going to be that fascia, that big fascia here of the iliotibia band. So we have that. And then we have this integrating into that. Pop the trochanters there. Okay. All right, let's go over the uh, muscles of the upper leg and pelvis area that we've been covering. On the back, the hamstrings, the bicep femoris on the outside here. This is the semitendinosus, and you can see how it has that thin strap. The semimembranosus is poking out on each side of that. Here it's been removed, so you see semimembranosus. Here is that uh, aponeurosis, that fascia coming down. Here's the tensor muscle. Here's gluteus medius, trochanter, head of femur. Here's how the gluteus maximus comes in and inserts itself between the hamstrings and the quads there, uh, all along the crest of the ilium coming around. On the front here, we've got the straps, the sartorius, and the tensor muscle coming down. This is really cool if you can see that a little bit, how the sartorius goes behind the vastus medialis and then comes back around and catches the tibia on the inside there. Here's all of our adductors coming out here and uh, the inguinal line where we have the, really the abdominals and uh, the obliques coming down. So it's a divide between torso and legs. All right, also you might notice the belly of the inside of the vastus medialis. Uh, more of a curve here, right? More of a contour. Uh, it's, it's a longer, lesser contour on the outside with the, with the uh, outside of vastus lateralis. All right. Okay, coming into the lower leg here, we're gonna take on the bones of, or the muscles on the front of the leg, on the side of the leg, on the back of the leg. So those are kind of how they break up the groups, the anterior group, the lateral group, and on the back they call it the superficial group. What, what I wanna do is go after the most prominent muscles first, rather than layer them up, because there's so many uh, muscles in the lower leg. And I think if I pick up the few that are the most important that you'll see, and then we'll sort of, in between those, name some of the others. So, uh, really a, a nice one to go after here right away is the, uh, let's come over here first, is the peroneus longus. Uh, peroneus uh, is also, uh, well, you also see the name fibularis. Uh, and so what that tells you is this is a muscle that attaches to the fibula, and we, the fibularis or peroneus longus, we're going to attach right at the head here of the fibula, and then we're going to come down the fibula, and we're going to have a whole sort of belly of the muscle right in here. Okay. So it's going to come down, maybe out a little bit, and then it, it makes this amazing journey. It's going to come down uh, behind the it's called the lateral malleosus. It's, it's the tail, if you will, the bottom of the fibula. It's going to come underneath here. And the tendon's going to make a journey all the way across your foot. And it's going to attach on the big toe side of your foot. So right we're on the little toe side. But it's going to go underneath and across here. Uh, 
where the right here's the calcaneus acuboid. It's going to cross here, and it's go to it's going to go to what's called the medial cuneiform, or the first metal metatarsal of the big toe. So let's see if we can color that in a little bit. So what we're kind of setting up here is we'll have another muscle that also attaches on the big toe at the base of that first metatarsal in the medial cuneiform uh, to balance sort of a strap on the other side. All right, so this is... Fibularis. or erroneous longus. And then on the front side here, On the front side here, yet we'll have that attachment point right on that uh, head of the fibula and coming forward with the tibia right in here. So I'm sort of on the front side, right in there would be the belly of the muscle. We're going to come down and again, we're going to go behind the ankle here, that lateral malleosis. And that's going to wrap underneath. There am I. And go to the base of the first metatarsal of the big toe. So we can see through there, it's going all the way across and hooking in there. This is fibularis longus. Okay, let's do the other side. And right under, on the head of the fibula, right underneath, right here. Come down on the outside here. And we're going to go behind. The, malle the lateral malleosis, that outside drop of a fibula coming around underneath, attaching to the first metatarsal, the base of that, and the medial cuneiform of the big toe. All right, so here, what this, what the fibularis longus, what a lot of it, it, it does is it helps you, if your foot wants to go in, you're really going to tweak your ankle and get it out of alignment. So a lot of what it's doing is just pulling your foot back straight here um, so that you have the most shock absorber possible in that ankle joint there. And so it's a, it's a, it's a good muscle for, for runners. All right, the next uh, muscle we're going to go after in the lower leg, of course, all of these muscles have to do with walking. So, uh, and when you walk, you probably notice that your heel lands first, but then to pick your foot up again, you got to go up on your toes. So what this muscle is about, it's gonna be on the front of your tibia, it's really about coming down and softening that, that transition to going back up. So it's involved a lot with like going down stairs. 
that kind of feeling. It makes me think of hiking the Inca Trail in Peru. Uh, I've done that three times now. And after the third day and the third pass, uh, you've got about 2,300 uh, steps to walk down with your backpack <laughs> and uh, big stony steps. And you're, it's, it's the tibialis anterior. You're really working that. You, you feel that one at the end of the day for sure. <laughs> OK. So um, it's going to start out in the very near to where we put in the fibularis for the peroneus longus. So we're going to be on the outside of the leg, not, not so much on the, on the head of the fibula now, but coming over onto the tibia. Okay. And then, uh, of, of course, these, there's, there's an interosseous membrane that really ties these two bones together and the muscles in there, too. But basically, we're going to have a belly of a muscle next to the fibularis longus. So this is in front of, really. Remember, fibularis or peroneus longus is, is more on the side. And this, this tibialis, you know, in some books it's called the anticus, but the tibialis anterior is going to come down and then it's going to make a movement over to the inside of your foot. So this is in front of your ankle, coming down and attaching just where fibularis longus does, underneath the first metatarsal of the medial cuneiform of the big toe. Okay. So it's, it's that. I'm in a cross right there. Tibialis anterior. So this is part of that anterior or group of muscles on the front of the leg. Okay, if we come over, if we come over to the uh, side view here. Uh, we kind of, I, I like to see the tibialis anterior lining up with the uh, iliotibia tract. Uh, so that's inserting itself here at the top the cap of the tibia, and then right underneath the cap is where we'll put tibialis anterior. And again, it's going to come down this way. So it's going to have a belly of a muscle that's really going to go in front of part of the tibia there from the side view. And then remember, it's going to cross over near the bottom here. So it actually puts a little bit of a, softens that angle, that transition from leg to foot when you're drawing it. And again, it's going to go down underneath the calcaneus and hit that medial cuneiform in the first metatarsal of the big toe. So again, both of these are like straps, right? Straps that are coming around holding on to the first metatarsal of the big toe. Okay. All right, let me draw the uh, other one on here, huh? shall we? So you get it starting on the outside. On that outside underneath the calf of the tibia. Big belly coming down. Still kind of on the outside of the leg. And then we'll want to come around and grab that first metatarsal medium cuneiform of the big coat. And that will be, again, in front the peroneus or fibularis longus goes behind the ankle. That would be called the lateral malleosus. This goes in front of the medial malleosus, so the ankle bone on the inside of your foot.
This is going to be the most prominent muscle on the front of, front of the leg that you'll see. All right. Okay, let's take on another of the lower leg muscles. This will be another extensor, and uh, it's going to come off the front here. And we'll see just uh, it really, I mean, it hooks into the tibia a little bit, but it really ties into the tibia uh, a whole bunch of the way down here. And we'll see just a teeny bit of that between the two muscles we just draw, the tibialis longus and the tibialis anterior. So it's going to come down like this. And we're really probably not going to see much of it until we get near the ankle here. And then where it shows up is it comes down here and it's, it's a extensor that connects to all of your toes but your big toe. And it's going to connect to the middle and distal phalanges. Okay, so if you don't count the toenail bone, it's after that, going back. So this is on the this is on the top of your toes here. So extensor.
you can imagine, sort of curling your toes up, and then you're wanting to uncurl them. That's what this muscle does. Or maybe you want to extend them. You're embedded in something. You really want to stretch your toes. That's extensor digitorum longus. While we're here, why don't we take on the fibularis tertius? It's a muscle that basically does and attaches everywhere the extensor digitorum longus does, from the tibia up here all along fibula. It even comes out in between right next to the extensor digitorum longus. The only difference is, right, instead of going to the middle or the ends of the toes, it's going to come down here to the base of the fifth metatarsal. That's its finger right there. That's fibularis tertius. So over here, this, we might catch it just right there, coming down to the little toe side. But again, it does travel all the way up, attaching in the same along the fibula up here, and just a little bit right there on the top there of tibia. Okay, not to leave the uh, big toe out, we need to bring an extensor down that will come down between the extensor digitorum longus, the one that ran to all the other toes, and the tibialis anterior tucking under there. So poking out of here would be the extensor hallucis longus. And where it's going to go is all the way down to what's called the distal phalanx of the big toe. So that's the last little bone there. And that's where, so this will pull your big toe up. Same thing over here. So in that little opening between tibialis anterior and the common extensor of the other four toes. Answer Alusis Longus. All right, would we have anything here? Uh, yeah, and actually, I should say this, this muscle starts right up in here, okay, coming down. And so, would we see it here? Well, we might see a little bit of it just in front of the tibialis anterior heading down to our, uh, to our big toe there. All right, there's really just one last one here. We have two everters of, of the lower leg. And we've already done one of them, the fibularis or the peroneus longus. And the bravest is one that's going to attach along the bottom half of the fibula here. And it's, uh, it's gonna have a kind of a belly that might, you might see a little bit on each side of it. Each side of our peroneus, our fibularis longus, okay? And then what it's going to do is it's going to come out behind the, the malleosis, right, of the, of the fibula again. It's going to cross in front, so it's underneath here, and hook on 
for your fifth metatarsal. So it's, it's, it's the shorter version of the averters, fibularis bravis. Okay, let's uh, head over to the back's view here. Let's work on the calf, right? Everybody knows the calf. Calf's actually composed of two different muscles. There's one called the soleus, which is, uh, gives the calf all of the, most of its volume. And then there's a thinner one that goes on top called the gastric medius. So let's, let's draw the soleus first because it's, it's uh, underneath so we can see what's happening here. We want to... Uh, it, it, it's all on the tibia here, okay? We want to start real high up here uh, and to the outside as an attachment point. And uh, where we're going to end up with, for both of these muscles, is a long tendon right down here. Called the calcaneal tendon. So it goes to the calcaneus. Or the calcaneal tuberosity. Uh, you might know it better as the Achilles tendon. All right, so the belly, the real body of the muscle, it, it's, I feel like it's wider first on the outside, and then it's going to be wider lower on the inside. And then coming down to the tendon here. Okay. So coming up. Lower, wider to the inside, and higher to the outside. Now that Achilles tendon, you want to keep it pretty, pretty high. Okay? This is the soleus. And we can come around and catch the other side too. So starting from the outside, here, coming down. Again, keeping up a little bit higher on the belly here, a little bit lower on the belly on the inside. Coming down into that cockanail tendon there. All right, so it's. So uh, the soleus muscle is going to work to raise yourself up, of course. Um, if you're sitting, it's going to, that's all sol soleus. If, if you're standing and want to raise up, then we'll engage both muscles of the calf. Uh, will we see the soleus from the front? Sure. You know, again, we want to kind of keep higher to the outside and lower to the inside. We would have this kind of feeling about the calf, okay? So what you really have here is a, a plane change. Whoops. A little wide there. A plane change. Uh, as you come around here with the tibialis anterior, then it's, it's really like you kind of go around and then you come out again. That kind of makes sense. So it's, it's, a, it's a real plane break between those two muscles there. So leaves. And we can uh, draw this on the side view too. Yeah, we're, we're, we're attaching up here on the, on the tibia coming off the platform. We kind of want to stay really high with that belly. Uh, let, let the uh, cockanail, the Achilles tendon, be very, very long, at least halfway up the leg, even longer on a woman. So we can kind of fill that in there.
Solvius. The gastric menius. The other part of your calf. Two-headed muscle. It's going to, uh, instead of attaching uh, up here on the tibia, all right, the gastric nevus. Instead of attaching on the back of the tibia here, it's going to attach on the condyles of the femur. In fact, let's not use horns. All right, so where we want to go with the uh, gastrocnemius is there's these two, uh, there's these two spools here that the, the head is going to uh, attach, attach on each one here. And then you're going to come down. Now we're going to kind of really be going over the soleus muscle. It's just kind of a bit more of a glove. The gastric femius is going to come down, so off of those two spools there, it has a little bit of a divide right in there. And then it becomes, just covers everything that the soleus was doing here. It even shares the attachment point and the tendon coming down to the, to the ankle, the calcaneal tendon. We go so gastrocnemius. Do it on the other side too. So uh, I guess the Greeks saw this as a sort of a frog belly shape. Okay, the two two attachments coming down, the split here, and then just really coming after. Higher on the outside, lower on the inside. Covering the whole tendon here. So if we were to take that on from the side view here, over the spool, and really, just a, sort of a more of a cross section here now, just a thin covering of gastric genius over soleus, coming down, sharing that common tendon. All right, so as we're wrapping up here with the back of the legs here, let's talk a little bit about some of the muscles that we've already discussed, uh, where we would see them, particularly in the lower part of the leg, beneath the uh, belly of the calf. So we had the uh, fibularis or peroneus longus, remember that came down here, went behind the lateral malleosis, the bottom of the fibula there, and then crossed underneath the foot. So we would see that, we would see that here. Again, it's going to, it would poke out here and come around underneath here. Peroneus arcadularis longus. that over here on the side too. Coming behind the fibula there and then going to underneath and hooking on that first metatarsal in the medial cuneiform. The 
fibularis longus. All right, so we have the fibularis longus coming up here. And we might have a little bit of fibularis bravis poking out in here. Remember, the bravest is going to come underneath the longest. But we'll see a little bit more of that down here. Fibularis bravest. All right, on the inside of the leg, so we have extensors on the outside, and we'll have flexors on the inside. The okay, flexor digitorium longus is going to come down here, go underneath, and it's going to go all the way to the ends of your toes, the second through the fifth toe. Flexor. Flexor digitorum longus. All right, we've got three, three groups that we've covered on the lower leg. We have the front, or the anterior, the side, the lateral, and the back, the superficial muscles. All right, to go over those, we have the tibialis anterior, which started on the uh, cap here of the tibialis on the outside of the leg, comes down uh, and crosses over in front of your tibia, goes underneath your foot, hooking to the base of the big toe, the first metatarsal, and the medial cuneiform. And sort of pairing with that on the outside here, coming down where we have our bicep femoris here, we have uh, hooking right on the head of the fibula here, the, the fibularis longus. That goes underneath, well, underneath the foot again, wraps around, comes underneath to the big toe uh, and the medial cuneiform. So first metatarsal and medial cuneiform of the big toe. Uh, we have between those, well, in this opening down here, we had the extensor digitorum longus, which was the goes to all four toes except your big toe. And then next one over, we had the extensor hallucis longus, which is the one that goes to the very end of your big toe. And then we had the extensor uh, uh, fibularis tertius, which is the one that went down to the base of the fifth uh, metatarsal, so little toe side. Uh, coming around the, the back here, uh, we have the calf, and it was composed of two muscles, the gastrocnemius, which is the covering, which goes all the way up to these spools here, the, the condyles of the femur. And then underneath that, uh, forming a large part of the, the volume of your calf is the soleus muscle, which was, which uh, gastrocnemius is removed here. Soleus, you can see, it hooks into the tibia, gastrocnemius back up on uh, the femur there. All right, I think that's it. I guess we, we had the, the fibularis bravis as well, which came down uh, right behind the ankle, crosses in front, and, and uh, hooks onto the base of the, of the fifth metatarsal. Uh, that one on my ankle, on my right ankle, snaps a lot, especially when I get up in the morning and stretch. I thought it was either from a taekwondo incident or a car accident, which both happened to me in the same week. Uh, I think it turns out it might be more genetic than that because uh, one of my daughters, she has that same thing that snaps on her ankle too. So, kind of interesting. But that's, that's the fibularis bravus coming down there. All right, let's take on a couple of muscles of the foot here. We have, uh, we'll, we'll just go on and do a couple of the, what are called the adductors, but they're really more for uh, flexing your toes. Uh, there, is a, there is a group that, that uh, are short muscle that, have a, that go to all, all the toes but the little toe in here. Um, there's one that goes to the big toe and then three that go to the three middle toes uh, called the extensor digitorum bravis. But uh, I don't think we have room to draw that really. But let, let's go after it. On this side of the foot, on this side of the foot, there's a couple of muscles that I think we could take on. Okay, so on the, on the sort of little toe side, right, on the outside of the foot here, there's a muscle that's going to start back here on the, uh, well, actually more like the back corner here of the calcaneus. And it's going to end up 
on right here, right after your fifth metatarsal, that first uh, phalanx there, okay? And uh, it's a muscle that looks like it has sort of two bellies to it. So you, you draw sort of one belly here, and then you can draw another belly. Again, this is going to be flexing your little toe. It's called the abductor digiti minimi. Okay, abductor digiti minimi. Going from the calcaneus to the uh, first phalanx there of the little toe. All right, and then let's uh, do one more here. We kind of have the same thing in terms of an, an abductor that's meant for uh, flexing. This will be for your big toe. So on this uh, inside view of the foot, all right, with the long arch here, we're going to hook again on the calcaneus bone back here on the, on the heel. And we're going to have a long tendon that, again, it's going to hook right here uh, on the first phalanx, just like on the little toe side. And then we're going to have a nice big belly of this guy come out. Kind of like right in there. So this is this is I'll color that into. This is called the proximal phalanx. And then there's the belly going into the calcaneus. And that is the. Um, Dr. Halusis. The abductor of the big toe. And finally here, we have a couple of straps that help to hold in all of these tendons coming down in through the uh, leg to the ankle and foot there. And, uh, and there, there's a couple of them here. There's one uh, that's higher than the malleosis, the medial and lateral malleosis, so higher than the ankle. And it's going to kind of have an angle like this. And these straps are called retinacula. And so this is the superior uh, retinacula of the extensors. Okay. And so we'll just kind of go over all of these guys. And then we'll have an uh, inferior one, so that's beneath that. It's, uh, it's kind of like a, almost like a double strap. It's gonna Y out, so we're gonna come down like this and across like this. So it has a kind of a There and there sort of feel to it. Same thing over here. And coming across this way. And then down like this.
So one is above, one is above the, uh, the outside of uh, the fibula here, the medial head here, or sorry, the lateral, and the other one is beneath that. Right, so outside of the lateral malleosis, above and below, retinacula. Okay, and the retinacula on the uh, side view here, we're going to have the, the, the one that's above the lateral malleosis. It's going to be a little bit of a strap. comes in front of everything, including the tibialis anterior here. Okay, so that's right in there. <laughs> And then down below here, we'll have coming coming underneath here. Kind of a Y shape from the outside. Might be easier with my finger. Everything running underneath that. All right, we've done it. Head to toe, all the muscles. Well, except the arms, right? We'll come back and do that. So I hope you've been enjoying this. I wanted to thank you for joining me. Take care.